And good morning, everyone, and welcome to Small Biz Matters, the half-hour program where you work on your business rather than in it. We've got a super jam-packed show today and a very special guest with us, Kylie from Jim Jam Hornsby is with us, and we're very excited to be having her. It's it's going to be jam-packed. We're doing a series at the moment, as my regular listeners will know, called Small Biz Journeys, where we dive into the lives and the pastimes and the experience of our well-known businesses in the area, some of them not so well-known, but all of them have just got really interesting stories to tell. And the reason I thought of this was actually while I was talking to you, Kylie. The reason why I thought of this is because we've all got something to learn from one another and small business does thrive by being uh, involved in one another's lives and finding out not just about the businesses, but about the people. And so I thought, let's let's epitomise that into a, a series of, of shows. So uh, last week we had um, another person coming on the show talking about uh, their small biz journeys. And you can, of course, catch up on our podcasts on smallbizmatters.com.au. And today we've got Kylie. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Alexi. It's good to have you on. It's good to have, I was saying before the show, it's good to have someone who knows microphone yes, technique. Yes, I Because, <laughs> <laughs> of course, you're not just... Uh, you know, the owner of a small business in Hornsby and passionate about dance and drama and involved in the local school, which we'll go into a little bit later. But um, you're in a band. I am. I am in a band. And, an, and I, a, I wear many hats. I wear many <laughs> hats. What we all do is small businesses. And you've got especially a lot of creative hats, which is what makes your life and time so interesting, as well as, uh, as, well as the hat you've got to wear for all those other things for your business. Your creative hat is probably one of the tallest, yes? Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still able to foster that um, your own needs and desires and things that you want to do outside of your business, which is great. Tell me a little bit about that because I think that as small business owners, we don't we don't really foster that um, that desire in ourselves and things we want to do outside of business. But you've managed to merge the two together so beautifully. Well, I have, but it hasn't always been that way. Um, there uh, was a big chunk of time, I guess, when my children were quite small and I was running um, Jim Jam Music that I really didn't have much time for that. And I missed, uh, in the last couple of years, I thought, oh, I, I so miss uh, performing. And that's where, I, that was my background um, before I became an educator, uh, was uh, singing and performing. And uh, even though on a daily basis when I'm teaching, there's an element of that in that, in, in that um, I miss doing the adult stuff. So uh, a couple of years ago, I joined uh, a fabulous women's choir, um, Humming Song Choirs. There's a, a, a great uh, choir called Seneswara, um, which is, they've, they have about five choirs around on the North Shore of Sydney. And uh, I joined them about two years ago and started feeling that that wonderful feeling of, of getting my creative juices flowing and mm. singing with lots of beautiful women and um, and that really inspired me. So I've been doing that. I've, I've had a break this term from that because then I got asked to, to sing in this great band, um, which is very different. It's just lots of fun. So we're singing, um, we're 80s corporate music, uh, dance music, I'm singing with a bunch of really great musicians. Is it kind of like Jelly Bean Jam? It is a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's everyone right. knows Jelly yeah, Bean Jam in right. Sydney. Yeah, that's right. So it's it's just oodles of fun. So every couple, every fortnight, I go and rehearse over at Marrickville with these guys, and you know we've got a gig coming up in October for Relay for Life out at Castle Hill mm. at Castle Hill Bowling Club. Um, so you know it's fun. Uh, it is sometimes a stretch. You know, after I'm running my business and teaching and then I take off and, you know, I, I didn't get home until about 1am this morning. Wow. Um, and you've got to do with children today. Uh, yeah, that's right. Get Ugh. my kids off to school. But look, the joy that I feel when I'm doing it is worth it. And um, But I do have to be really careful of, of over overdoing it. And I've got a really fantastic partner. My husband's great. He's supportive because he knows how much I love it. And um, as I'm supportive of him, he travels a lot for work. And so, you know, you've got to have someone who's got your back like that as well. And he always does and has with my business, with the ups and downs of, of running my business. He's been my cheerleader in the background going, come on, you're okay, you can do it. And that's what you need as well. If you don't have people around you um, to support you, that I've learnt, that's a big lesson I've learned over the, over the years. And there's a lot of tick boxes that you're talking about there. There's a lot of check boxes that you kind of need to fall into place in order to succeed not only as a small business but to keep yourself uh, thriving, I guess, is the other word because you can become so immersed in it. And it's a bit of a timing thing. You mentioned at the beginning there that a lot of the time you have to wait until everything's up and running before you can start to look at your own wants and needs again. So it, in terms of timelines, yeah. what realistically for your business did it take before you could really just take a step back and go, okay, I can breathe now and now I can start looking after myself a little bit more again? 
Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, for me, my my business really took off um, when my children were very young. I had a one-year-old and a four-year-old when I had a big career change and decided to to start. Um, and first can I of ask all. what you were before that? So I w- my background was I was in the um, travel industry. I was in sales and marketing for a large um, tourism company and uh, ran events and, and uh you know, organised brochures and and did a lot of that sort of stuff. And um, it was wonderful and I loved it. It was a lot of travelling, long hours. So when I had my daughter, who's now 15, it really wasn't ideal for me to go back to that. It it would have been, I would have had a lot of time away from home. My husband also travels a lot for work. So we made the decision that I I wouldn't go back to that. Mm -hmm. Um, But on the side, as well as doing that, I was performing and um, that was my 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 other job so i was in a um a cabaret group called the voluptuosos <laughs> <laughs> and uh we worked for almost 10 around 10 years actually um wow. performing um mainly corporate work around australia um it's so unique to find someone who actually earns money from music yeah well yeah that's right <laughs> although you know some pe- people used to say to me um why do you have a day job? Why don't you just do this? And I think it doesn't pay my mortgage. Because I need to eat. <laughs> That's right. You know, I'd be really busy from sort of October to December and then, you know, you'd go through a period of time sort of from February to, you know, through to April where, you know, we'd be gigging once a month if that. Mm. So, you you know, you can't rely unless you're, you know... Guy Sebastian and yes. <laughs> people like that. Conveniently, it's, that's exactly right. Um, but it was it was wonderful. So uh, when I when my my girls were little, I actually to, went to take find a music class for my daughter, and there was nothing around. Or I had to go. I had to travel forty minutes to find hmm. a good uh, early childhood. And you music. would you would know what you were talking yeah, about when right. you did it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, I saw there was a gap in the market there. I thought it was something that I would enjoy doing but you know initially when I first um, started doing it uh, to be honest with you I thought oh this is a great little thing for me to do while the girls are little I can earn a bit of money a bit like a little hobby business initially that's what my business was and I can work a couple of days a week earn a bit of money um, you know so my my first class first first of all I did the training and um, which took about six months to, to train up was that full-time no, no, no. It wasn't full time, but it was time consuming. Mm. Um, and but luckily, I could do most of it online. And um, and then I started working for um, two other educators because I thought, you know, I don't know whether um, this is going to be right for me. I need to get my head around curriculum and get my head around teaching. Um, I'd done lots of adult training in my previous job, so I was used to getting up and talking in front of people. I was used to training and teaching adults, but I'd never taught children before. Um, so I had the music background, but I didn't have the, the teaching children side of things. That the was pedagogy. The pedagogy. That was the huge learning curve for mm, me mm. in the first two years particularly. So I thought, let me go and work for someone else. Then I don't have to worry about, you know, collecting money, getting enrolments. I just turn up, do the teaching, focus on the teaching. So I did that for about 18 months and, and learned a lot from these two two educators as well. And particularly one of them was really a wonderful mentor for me. And then I decided to start up um, Jim Jam Music. So um, I gradually, I started slowly. I started with um, initially, you know, one class in Hornsby, I and this was my, outside your home, in your, inside your home, wasn't it? Not, not, not initially. Oh, so initially, you I, in that place in Asquith. Yeah, no, no. So initially, I was in um, the Salvation Army Church in Hornsby. Ah. So I started running classes there, one then two days a week. Um, you know, I think my first class had three children in it. <laughs> um, and it was uh, one of them your cho- your, cho- your own child. Oh, I had to beg. No, but I was like, I think I asked my mother's group, and you know, I was I was ringing. You know, I was I was getting people, can you please come? Just I need numbers. I need some numbers. <laughs> um, and then it built from there. And uh, and as as I got more time as well, um, I added more days on. So, you know, I ended up for a while there, I was doing three days, three mornings a week. Um, it was a great location um, for a long time. And then I, I moved the studio to my home in Asquith. And that's when things really exploded because I had, um, I, I think I was doing four four mornings a week. Um, I had a dedicated room mm. um, there and it was a, a great location. Um and it, it was it was fantastic. So that's where really things started to. So I went, you know, I, I I sort of went from, you know, fifty, sixty students to about a hundred. 
I'm sitting on about 150 students now. So, you know, and I've moved three locations and now I'm in, I'm in sort of um, my dream, you know, Oh, it's just gorgeous. Location. Those of you who haven't gone down to uh, Coronation Street, it's just, well, if nothing else... This is the sort of business that we need to see in Hornsby adding to the vibrancy and and once again, I'm sorry, I'm just getting in on my soapbox here again. It is so disappointing to to know that the, the council is not encouraging more businesses like that to be in that space. I mean, the number five pop-up shop, empty again. So it was rented out for, you know, a year. Uh, they had a great program going in there where it was a pop-up shop and mm. now it's gone. And, um, well, those of you who haven't read it, actually, go to the Monthly Chronicle, the front page. I've contributed to an article by the editor talking about what the council actually does for small business. And uh, apart from nothing, uh, and I, I, I mean, mentioned uh, the, the, the mayor's response was, um, oh, yeah, there, there's the pop-up shop. And I went, no, there's not. It's gone. Mm. You let it go 12 Actually, months there, ago. I saw a, a, a development application on there. There's a hairdresser going in there now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. So we had the opportunity to bring it back and then it's not. But that's what that's what I'm saying. It's businesses such as yours, if nothing else, just bringing the colour and, and the, the mums and just bringing mm. the people to that area of, of Hornsby. Yeah, look, I think, I mean, I mean you know, the coffee shops around there, love that I'm doing what I'm doing because they get so much business from it. You That's know, the right. mums come and do a music class with their child and then potter over to a coffee shop and have a coffee. You know, I have um, uh, one of them says to me, oh, is it holidays? Are you, you going to be working in the holidays? Because you know, I know his business goes down when I'm not open mm. because, um, you know, it, it, it's fantastic. And, and uh, I love being on that side of Hornsby. I love it's 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 a added a real vibrancy to the area, I think. Absolutely. Um, us has. being there and there's some other businesses around there that that, that are, are doing the same thing sort of thing. So um yeah, it's it's fantastic and um I love the direction that my business has grown. And and years ago if you told me that I was to, I would be doing this ten years later, this is where it would be. Um you know, initially when I started I thought, oh this is something I'll do for a couple of years and then I'll decide what I'm really going to do with my life. Yeah, really. And here I am. This is the longest I've ever done anything in my life. And also what's what's happened for me is that when the initial reasons I got into it are very different to the reasons I'm now in it. Mm. You know, I I love I love teaching young children. I love seeing the development. Um I understand, you know, a lot of the um a lot of the reasons why I got into it. I thought, oh, this will be good fun and this will earn me a little bit of money. It's not about that anymore. Um, when I saw the difference it made in families' lives and in children's lives, um, that's my motivation now. You know, it's it's uh, it's a very different... What I've learnt from, from running this business is, is, uh, is amazing. And talking about music in general in terms of children's development, it is absolutely crucial. I mean, we, you and I could have an entire one-hour discussion about <laughs> the, the, the downfall of music teaching in, oh, in yeah. primary schools, yeah. the fact that there is... I believe that there is no longer a dedicated uh, music teaching course in New South Wales for primary school teachers. Mm, mm. So uh, there's no opportunity for those who have the strength in in music to specialise in mm. that. So I only learned this a few uh, a few years ago that each primary school teacher has a specialism apart mm. from being a particular year group or being primary school yeah. um, and fewer and fewer of them are actually music. And we end up with just these teachers who have got this vague interest in music and they played piano for five minutes when they were young and mm. then they're just considered music uh, teachers and they're not. Yeah. And, and also not. teachers are really stretched. Like, you know, um, so I, I teach choir at a local school and um, Asquith. at Asquith Public School, uh, which I love. So I'm a contractor. So I, I'm contracted by the PNC to teach choir there. Um, so the parents pay me directly for coming in before school two mornings a week and teaching two choirs. Um, now they've got wonderful teachers on staff there. They don't have the time. You know, they, they are so stretched. So, um, uh, you know they're busy running sport programs and and um, and doing other things. They don't have the time to do it. So um, their music is outsourced, um, and that's just the way it has to be. And interesting that it's not outsourced through the school, but in fact through the organisation that is the PNC. That's right. Yeah. And that's the same with our school as well with the band program, mm. because not because the school doesn't want to do it, no. but they simply don't have the time, the resources, exactly. the funding, because it's not. 
high on the agenda. Music music is not yeah. um, a, a priority. Right. And it should be because academically it is proven to be totally. strengthening children's mathematical skills if they learn an instrument Absolutely. and if they're doing it from a young age. So mm. hurrah to you filling that gap. Yeah, I love it. You know, and it's again, it's one of those things that I took on thinking I, I actually started doing a volunteer choir there for their fate a couple years ago. And then I had parents approach me and say, look, can you, can you do something? They don't have a choir. And, and, um, and look, again, it's one of those things that has totally inspired me. I love it. Um, the kids, you know, it's interesting when I come in, you know, I get them sleepy in the morning. It's very hard in the middle of winter, you know, parents getting them there at quarter to eight in the morning for, for choir. But I sometimes have grumpy children walk in the door and when they walk out again, 45 minutes later, they've got a they've got to skip in their step. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what you music does. Just been singing for the last that's hour. That's right, but that's what music does. <laughs> yeah. You know, music and ma- music makes you forget um, your troubles. You have to be very in the moment. I mean, that's what I love about my job as well with with my teaching is that you know whatever's happened, whatever you know argument I've had with you know my teenager them that morning or something like that. It's it's all gone when I'm teaching. You have to be very in the moment and. Uh, and and families are like that too. It's you know once they step inside the doors of of my studio or at school with choir, um, they're there. They're very present, mm. and um, and it's a beautiful thing. Mm. I think. Also, we're going to go to a quick quick break now and listen to some community service announcements. You're here on Small Biz Matters on Triple H one hundred point. One FM will be back after these announcements. So thanks for joining us today, Kylie. It's great to have you in the studio. It's my pleasure. And we've just been talking before the break a little bit about your small biz journey because we're here all about learning from one another here on uh, on Triple H. And I think what was really interesting we were talking about was not just the chronological nature, but also the developmental and and the um, the way you grow and the way you move from you can you can see it now in hindsight. You know, 10, as you said, 15 years later, you can look back and go, okay, well, that was that stage and that was that stage and that worked for that many years and that worked. Then I moved on to the next thing. There's no way you can see that at the beginning, though, is there? No, absolutely not. I mean, I think that's what it's all about. It's a, it's about evolving. And um, I've also, I guess because I'm a creative person and I do have a short attention span. <laughs> so um, for me to change and grow my business has been a necessity for me to keep vibrant and um, and keep excited about it. So would you call that development reactive or are you more, can you see it? Uh, can you see it coming oh, and therefore you've been able to change? Or have there been no, times where you've done both? Both, bo- both, absolutely. Um, some of it's been out of necessity. For example, um, you know, I had my studio at home for a number of years at Asquith. Um, I really had to move the studio out of home because our house got bought by developers. So, um, that'd do it. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> and I knew that it was very unlikely for us to find another home where I could have a studio running out of it um, that was accessible for yeah, people. Yeah, so and, close and, and close and, 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 mm. and handy because we were in a really a good spot there at Asquith. Um, so I started looking and I thought, you know, also, you know, it's been great working from home, but I would love home to be just home again. And um, so then I started looking for commercial premises and I'd looked over the years and it was always out of reach in terms of, you know, financially, it was just going to be too costly. Not to mention the bond and the risk that you take. Yeah, that's right. You know, and it is a big risk. And I guess I am a bit of a risk taker, which is, um, uh, I think in small business, you have to be to grow as well. And, um, and be, be a bit brave. And I thought, well, oh, I'm just going to go for it. So I found this location in Coronation Street, not where I am now, across the road. And it wasn't the perfect location. It was up a big flight of stairs, which, you know, mums with babies and prams, and that's not ideal. But um, the rent was reasonable. And I thought in, in the location was great. Um, I'm just going to go for it. And look, for two years, I ran the studio out of that location. And then I started going look, these stairs really are an issue for a lot. I do lose people who've had babies and then they decide to take a break because having a baby and a toddler upstairs is hard or, you know, some disabled people or older people who yeah. bring in grandchildren. Yeah. Um, also, I had issues with ventilation because they're old buildings. Yeah. Um, and then this other location just popped up and, again, I just jumped. And I did my homework. I sat down and, and did my figures and went, okay, can I afford to do this? It's a lot more rent than what I was who paying Who did you before. speak to when you sat down and did that for that transition? Did, was it really just yourself who did it or did you get advice from other business owners or your accountant? Who did you talk to? Um, I sat down with my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, he's always a, a vo- the voice of reason for me. Yep, yep. Um, so I sat down with him. I sat down with my um, my 
colleagues, I guess. I have an admin, fabulous um, uh, girl who does my admin, who is a great friend of mine now as well, and um, I trust her. Her husband's great as well. He He's helped my business a lot, um, physically helping us with the new studio, getting it already, but also, you know, he's he's got a good head on him, business head on him, so he's always been there to give advice to me. Um, and Carmel, who is, is my um, colleague and teacher and friend who I work with. So I do I, – I, I'm not a keep things to myself kind of person. I ask for advice. I share things. I – you know, that's just the way that's I got am. to be part of your success. I think so. I think so. Um, you know, I, yeah, I, I think that's, that's been, I, I sounded out a lot of people and, and, and also my, um, my community, my, my community of other teachers around the world. So, uh, on, I have a fantastic community of, um, you know, the, the program that I predominantly teach is kinder music and we have a fantastic community of teachers through on a Facebook page, um, there's hundreds around the world. And um, so it was a combination of also consulting a lot of those um, colleagues and saying, what do you think? Should I go for this? Should I do it? Um, I've also uh, got a, a great mentor. Her name is Chantelle Duffield, who is um, runs a program called Studio Expansion Program. She helps dance schools and music schools and um, gymnastic schools uh, grow their businesses and, and she's a marketing guru and um, and you know around the time I was thinking of moving and growing I went and did a weekend course of hers and helped get some clarity so um, I kind of think when you're running a small business uh, you have to be always learning. I like there's some really key words that you mentioned in that in that discussion then you were saying your community because I think for you, you don't just think of your community as the people you live around, but actually y- your stakeholders in your business, your, the people who work for you, the people whose husbands who yeah. work for you and and your clients mm. and also and, – and research, 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 research. And we do say that a lot on the program is become – connected with people and it doesn't have to be just in Australia or in your immediate vicinity but talk to people worldwide who do what you do and get in these groups and ask for help because I think in the last three or four years where I've become a business and and moved forward and all that sort of thing I love sitting down and, and talking to people and it's amazing if you just ask for help the number of people who will go, yeah, I'll sit down with you for a coffee for half an hour and impart Absolutely. all this amazing knowledge. And people are very willing to do it. Advice is free mm. if you ask. And you ask the right person, of course. You That's right. Crap yeah. advice. But, yeah. but it, it, you, know, you, know, you wouldn't talk to someone about your financial circumstances unless they were your accountant. But there's no reason why you can't sit down with someone and go, so roughly what's it going to cost me if I do move into these premises mm. and what have I got to be conscious of? And I suppose when you're on that Facebook group, you would have been asking them to like, okay, what are some of the hidden costs that I haven't thought yeah, of yeah. that people who have gone through a similar experience have mm. gone through? Yeah. So with contractors, um, you mentioned there that one of the people that you hired was just has now become a friend, but it was a mum. What what made you think of, of going out there and just going, has anybody got any admin experience and can help me? Yeah. Where, did, well, where look, was the thought progression there? Yeah, look, my, my you know, looking at, at myself, um, my weakness in terms of running my business was the administration side. I, I, um, I hated chasing people for money. You're a creative. I'm a creative. That's right. <laughs> so chasing people for money or having to talk to people in class about, look, you haven't paid your fees. Can you can you get on with it? Um, and following up on phone calls quickly, and and um, and also selling my business. You know, like selling over the phone in terms of this is why you should come. I'm great face to face talking to people. Um, uh, I, I, I guess about five years ago, I came to the point where I thought, oh my gosh, I don't feel like I'm doing any of this 100%. I'm, you know, I'm I'm compromising in lots of different areas because I'm not graded at all. And um, anyway, I, I had this thought of, I had a mother in mind who brought her, her little girls to my classes who I got along with really well. And I just had this gut feeling that, well, I thought, I'm just going to ask her if she would be interested in, in, in doing this work for me. Um, I knew she wasn't working at the time. So I said, look, would you be interested in taking my phone calls, you know, sending out my invoices, um, doing a bit of admin, I'll give you a phone, you know, you can work from home. Um, It's, you know, probably might be an hour a day, it might be some weeks it'll be five hours a week, some weeks it might be 10, you know. Anyway, so she said, I'd love to do it. So she did it for about two years until um, they decided to take the kids off and travel around Australia. So then I needed to find someone else. But what what happened is that within six months of handing that job over to somebody, my business doubled. Huh. 
my business doubled. And that's not because you physically went out there and no. went, I am going to double my numbers. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You just took one of those hats off. I took one hat off. And so it gave me the space to um, uh, focus on my teaching, focus on marketing, which I love doing marketing is my background um, but I wasn't having the time to do that because I was knee deep in the in the admin of, of it all um, so took the thing away that I, I I was the least good at and and I, I didn't like mm-hmm. and gave it to someone who was good at it mm-hmm. and um, my business flourished and and that was it's probably the, been the biggest lesson for me um, in you know in this 10 years that I've been running my business is outsource you know, the things that you can. And what I did, and initially for years I'd been thinking, well, I can't afford to do that. But what I did was I thought, you know what, if I, if I taught three more classes, Mm. I will cover that person's wage. I'd rather teach three more classes than have to do that. To do receipts and things like that. Yeah, that's right. To then do that administration. And then, of course, what I didn't realise would happen is, is my business grew so much. So then I, I, got, I found another mum at, at our local school who was actually, um, she was vice president of the PNC and, um, and I knew her, wasn't great friends with her, but I knew her and I thought, I don't know, I think she might be good at this job too. And so uh, Nicola took over um, Tanya's job about uh, just over two years ago and, um, and, you know, we haven't looked back. Did you do anything in your corporate life? Did you have anything to do with HR? What is it that was... I, I'm really intrigued when you say, I knew that that person would be good at that. Is that, do you think, comes from your teaching background or just because you're a really nice person and you <laughs> read people really well? I think I read people really well. Um, Did you do anything for HR, though, when you, when you were doing corporate? No, not really. No, no, <laughs> no. But, I, but I'm a people person and I worked with a lot of... worked in, in big offices. I worked with a lot of people. Um, I'm pretty good at, at gauging people's strengths, um, I think, see, I suck at that. Yeah. I'm really, I just think everyone's <laughs> fabulous. And then I think too much of them and they're, oh, okay. That Look, I've made me. mistakes over the years, you know. A couple of years ago, I almost hired, well, I, I, I hired a teacher who had amazing credentials um, and she lasted uh, two weeks. On and, paper. Yeah, yeah, on paper, she was amazing. And, but I had, you know what, I had a gut feeling. I was, there was something in my gut that was thinking, oh, there's something not right here. But I kind of went, oh, but, a, but, but gosh, she's got such great experience. Of course she's going to be good and I should have trusted my gut, which I do now really, you know, since then I've had no no troubles in there. But, I mean, that, again, a lesson learned. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and I, you know, I met with this particular person and, and she was very nervous. And But, again, her, on paper it's like, wow, she's got amazing. And she had, you know, a Bachelor of Teaching and all this sort of thing. She had a lot of experience teaching in schools. And um, but it just didn't work out, and it was a lot harder. The job was a lot harder than she thought it was going to be. Funny that. And also, she dealing found with it, children. Dealing well, also dealing with parents. You know, because we a lot of our job is dealing with children, but also dealing with parents who um, are going through different things and different personalities, different ways of parenting, um, and uh, and you have to to work with that. You know, so it's not only working with children; it's working with families. Um, so. Yeah, you've either got it or you don't or you need 25 Absolutely. years' experience to Absolutely. be able to do it. Take me back to that. You mentioned just before the break about uh, when you wanted to get some experience before you set up your own business, which is, I think, the big scary thing about setting up your own business is, A, am I going to succeed? Or B, can I really do this? I mean, when I started bookkeeping, I just looked at all the people around me with decades of bookkeeping mm. experience just going, I know nothing yeah. compared to these people. How can I possibly put myself out there by comparison? Um, so how do you have that conversation with another company, essentially, where mm. you go, look, I just want to use you for experience. <laughs> I'm going to go on my merry way. <laughs> Honestly, how do you, how do well, you approach they, that? Well, look... Luckily, the community, um, the kinder music community they work in is is uh, a, a, like a big happy family, generally. Is it like also a professional association, essentially? Do they do like mentoring? And yeah, yeah. I mean, awesome. I'm, we're, we've, I'm on the board, actually. I'm on the Australian um, uh, kinder music PKE board, it's called. And we've got a conference coming up in two weeks here in Sydney. So we do that every two years and we do professional development every second year. So educators can come along to those. Um, you know, we've got a, our conference is a two-day conference. We've got a couple, we've got three um, uh, people flying out from the US to come and present for us to, awesome. from our head office. So so important um, professional associations. It is. It's aren't amazing. They? So and I love being involved in that. Um, it makes uh, makes me feel like I'm growing um, and keeps me enthusiastic about everything that I'm doing. It keeps your finger on the pulse with keeps all the changes. Keeps your finger on the pulse. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, 
so when I was teaching for these other um, educators, um, I, they they knew that I was looking at opening my own studio, but I wasn't around the corner from them. You know, I, I worked I worked for a teacher who was in Narrenburn, um, in uh, you know closer to the city. And then I worked for another teacher who she was based out at Mona Vale, but she did at the time have classes running in um, Thornley. Um, and I, I, I really basically set up when she pulled out of the area. So uh-huh. I didn't step yeah. on any toes. Yeah. And look, I think we're all quite respectful of um, of each other. Um, I haven't had anybody, anyone come and, you know, jump in. I know in some parts um, of Australia and, and, and in the US there's a, a little, there's sometimes an issue with that. But I haven't had – I mean, I've had competitors come along but come and go and I've learned over the years I used to stress about it and now I just do – I do my own thing and I think, well, they're doing their thing. I'm doing my thing. Um, they're not doing it the same as me. I'm just going to get on with what I'm doing and and it's never been an issue. Yeah, yeah, and it, I think that honesty is the best policy by the sounds of it with your with your experience as well just being really open and honest and oh, absolutely. being conscious of other people because I think small businesses it's one of the things we're really concerned about. You either go into a market knowing full well that there's competition there and you put yourself out there or you can be a bit naive and put yourself into the market and go, ah, nobody else is as good as me or not that, but nobody else is, is coming along and does what I do, but they will. They will come along and do what you do. They will. Um, I agree. The, but but the, the key is is to stand out and to be a little bit different. And, you know, when, when I decided to move locations to um, 11 Coronation Street, only back in June, we, we opened the new studio and I thought, well, I've got to evolve and I've got to grow and, and I'm in a much bigger studio space. So what does the area have what doesn't the area have that I can offer and um so you know we're offering drama now and and um and and singing and other programs you know I want to do parenting workshops yeah. and I mean like I said um, it's, it's such an important it's going to be a hub a of hub, the community a hub for creative mm. creative arts mm. so for for children and for parents and for families um that's where what I want my studio to be yeah yeah and to be a place where people come and feel really safe and welcomed mm. and you know one of the things I, I when I started my business years ago and I and I've, even though I've grown I've, I've been really conscious of keeping it the personal part of my business there even though and that's now important I've grown for small to, business in general yeah, yeah I mean you know I'm, I'm aiming for over 200 students in the next six months getting my numbers right up there but I don't want to lose that um, personability one of the things I always felt you know and I took my kids to swimming lessons and things no one knew their name Except that it was written up on a whiteboard, but you know there was there was uh, you know, and sometimes they'd have a different teacher all the time, and you know, and they were just a number, and they were in and out, and and I I never wanted my business to be like that. I wanted I always want you know families to walk in the door, feel that they're special and valued, and um, that we notice them. But that's what small business does so well. We nurture yeah. our clients. We know them individually. We know them not just as a number or a, a peg, uh, you know, mm. another achievement. It is actually very much a personable relationship. We're just going to take a quick short break and come back after these community service announcements. And welcome back to Small Biz Matters, supporting our small business community. This is the half hour program where you work on your business rather than in it. And we are in a series of interviews over the next few weeks called Small Biz Journeys, where we're we're learning from one another, which is what I think small business does really well. Instead of seeing everybody as competition, we listen, we learn, we understand the values and the journeys that we've all been through. And I think talking to Kylie today, there's been quite a lot of um, similarities that you can think of across industries, never mind just across businesses. But, you know, you're talking about when you were taking on your first contractors and, and how you grew and, and your expectations and talking to the people around you and, uh, and and getting their advice. This is all things that apply to all small business. Mm. And I think it doesn't matter if you're, you know, a bookkeeper or someone who's creative or someone who's a consultant, if you consult a big business or if you just work with small people or if you just work with consumers, it's all the same journey, really. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you can't be everything to everyone. I mean, that, I think that's probably my, the biggest lesson that I've learned. You know, I, um, um, I, I think... The, you know, the best thing I, I learned was was to get, get great people around you, yeah. um, share your experiences, learn from others, um, outsource things that, that you know, you, you don't feel you, you're capable of. And even if it might be a stretch financially, you know, I think what I've learned is that it's actually paid off. 
take actually, those risks. Take those risks. But be brave. I like yeah, that word you brave. used. Be brave. Because ultimately, you know, we are the experts in our field. The reason why yeah. we've gone into small business is because we love what we do. Mm. We're passionate about our clients and the people that we service, but also making small business work. Yeah, believe in yourself. Mm, mm. Let me remind everybody out there as well that Hornsby actually has one, uh, the last spotlight they did that talked about small business, which was way back in 2011, the Hornsby Council. There was one business for every eight residents in Hornsby and that Mm. was six years ago. So you can imagine how much it's grown. Apparently there were 40 new businesses a week being set up back then. And we have the space and we have the... um, we have, we have the space in our homes to think about that. I think people who live in the inner city just go, oh, there's no way I could possibly have an office in this space unless I made it an office wall as opposed to an mm. office room, which, which we do have the luxury of up here. But we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have... Mm. We just don't have the support mechanisms. Um, I've been talking to a number of businesses this week about, you know, the, the Monthly Chronicle article and what is it that, that government can do. Now... I kind of find it a bit odd the the way that on one side of things they say, well, we're all about supporting small business. But on the other hand, they say, well, we're all about support, and a, support a business either failing or, or not. It's up to them. It's not yeah. up to us. So which one is it? <laughs> so are you the people who are for small business and supporting them? And nobody's expecting a handout. Nobody's walking up to the council doors and going, I want 100 bucks because I want to do some marketing and I'm going to benefit Hornsby because I'm going to market my business in Hornsby. It's not about that. It's just, can we just get the parking right? Can we just well, yeah. get the anything? Parking, that's the biggest issue I've got. <laughs> I think everyone does. It doesn't matter where you are in Hornsby. You know, I kind of think I bring all these people to the local area, but I can't, you know, I can't park. Um, Yourself. Myself. You know, right. There, awesome. and it's not ideal for me to catch public transport to my studio all the time. So what's the solution? Um, well, you've got stuff to carry you and you've got yeah, that's right. I've got Yeah, that's right. So, so what's the solution for the parking thing then? Well, I've I've been parking in um, in the TAFE car park, and I'm paying for parking. They they offer that, but then you know for the last two weeks the machine's been broken. <laughs> so awesome. so I'm running out and moving my car around, and you know I've already gotten a few tickets for that, and and it's so frustrating because I think you know I bring a lot of business to the area. I don't expect to be able to park, um, you know. Outside, within, your door. outside my yeah, door, yeah. but if there was a space that local businesses could be directed to and that we could we could park safely, I even don't mind paying for it. What if you I had really a, don't? What if you had a sticker that you had exactly. each of the businesses had one sticker that they could have yep. per business, and that gave them unlimited parking, but they had to pay for it? Would you exactly? Be all right for that? I'd do that if the, if they said, okay, pay for this sticker. It's hundred bucks a year for you to pay for this and you, but you can park it, you know, I'd, I'd do it. It would be worth it. <sighs> uh, and, and to me, it seems like something so simple. Oh, it really. does. It's just thinking outside the box. But yeah. what it is, is it's talking to people. So, you know, Small Biz Matters, we're all about, about small business advocacy mm, as well. Mm. I'm just having a conversation. Yeah. So the problem is, is that we, we don't have anyone we can pick up the phone to. And if, for those of you who are interested, that title is Economic Development Officer and any other council in Sydney has at least one person in that role. Um, we have nothing. We mm. don't have that here at Hornsby Council. Um, so those of you who are actually chamber members or who might be interested in taking part in a survey, the president of the Chamber of Commerce has finally secured a meeting with um, the mayor next week. And we're asking our members, and in fact, you know what, we're asking our non-members as well, to sit down and do the survey and tell us what it is that they think works, what doesn't work, what could the council do better, what can the chamber do better when interacting with the council. So if that's something you might be interested in, I'd actually might pop that up on the Small Biz Matters uh, Facebook page, a link so people can do that survey because information is everything. There's no point in us just running up, going up there and jumping up and down and yelling at the man. We haven't got any data behind us. So you guys, you as as the businesses of Hornsby, tell us what, what we should be talking about. Look, thanks for coming on the show today, Kylie. It's been, uh, pleasure, it's been fascinating. <laughs> I love these programs. It's so interesting to just sit down and, and have a chat. I said to my husband, uh, you know, can I have a job where I can just sit down and talk to people? And he said, yeah, that's a politician. I went, oh, no, 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 <laughs> never mind, never mind. You've been listening to Alexi on Small Biz Matters, the half-hour program where you work on your business rather than in it. I will see you next week, every week, Tuesday, 9 a.m. Thanks for listening.